Hello everyone. It's good to be with you for this, the final assembly of the summer term. As you can see, I've already lit the candle to remind us of God's presence with us and to remind us of Jesus, who is the light of the world. Well, looking back, it's been a really strange and sometimes difficult year, hasn't it? And one of the things that myself and David and Anna have really, really missed is our coming into school each week as we normally would. However, we've still been able to explore some wonderful stories from the Bible together and to mark the important seasons and festivals of the church year with you, such as Harvest, Advent, Christmas, uh, Lent, Easter and Pentecost. I wonder which is your favourite festival or season. I wonder which is your favourite story. I wonder if there's one that really makes you say to yourself, wow, that's just so amazing and mysterious and wonderful. I need to stop and think about it and actually try and fathom out what it's all about and what it means to me. Well, I just want you to hold on to those thoughts for a moment while I pick up my Bible and turn to just around about the middle of the Bible where I find the book of Psalms. Now, Psalms are ancient and beautiful words, a bit like hymns, and they were designed to be sung and sometimes accompanied by musical instruments. Now, appearing sometimes in the middle or at the end of some of the Psalms is a really ancient and mysterious Hebrew word. I've got it here. It's spelt S-E-L-A-H and pronounced in Hebrew, I think. Sila. Can you try and say that? Sila. It's always puzzled me as to what it means. And I've tried to find out. But the interesting thing is that no one really knows for sure what it means. Some people think it may have been an instruction to the musicians to stop. Some think that it was there to provide a pause in the music so that the people hearing the psalm could make a response of praise with their own voices. And other scholars think that sila means to pause and in the silence think about the words that have been heard or sung, to give time to better understand them and to let them speak to our hearts and minds. We may not be entirely sure of its meaning, but sila is a good word to remember. And not just when we see it in the book of Psalms, but also when we hear any part of the Bible, and especially those parts I spoke of earlier, those parts that make us think, wow, what an amazing story. Perhaps you can think of some of your favourites. Let's see, what am I in? Well, how about, for example, the story of Jesus being born and the angels coming from the heavens and appearing to the shepherds to tell them all about it? Or the story when Jesus appears to his disciples after dying on the cross and rising again and shares a meal with them? These stories could remind us to say, Sila, to stop, pause and take time to reflect and to wonder about the words. Sila, what do you see in your mind, in your mind's eye, as you read or hear the story? What does it mean to you? How does it make you feel? Sila. You know, this mysterious Hebrew word is also a good word to remember when you're out and about this summer. A reminder to stop and wonder and appreciate all you see and experience in towns and coasts and countryside that you may visit. Just to pause and take it all in and give thanks. Sila. Well, it's time for a prayer which begins with the opening words of an ancient and beautiful psalm that was set for morning prayer last Sunday. It's Psalm 67. And it was originally written, it says, for the director of music with stringed instruments, a song, a song. This is how it begins. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. Selah. 
shut your eyes for a moment and imagine God's face shining upon you. I wonder how it makes you feel. I wonder what you see in your mind's eye. The psalm goes on. May all people everywhere praise you, O God. May all the people give thanks and praise you. Selah. Imagine everyone, everywhere, giving thanks for all that's good. Selah. I wonder what images you see in your mind's eye. And now a prayer. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful world. Thank you for loving each and every one of us and for sending Jesus, the light of the world, to show us your way of love. When we read or hear a Bible story that speaks to us in a special way, when we see something that's beautiful, when we're with the people who make us feel loved and special, may we remember that mysterious Hebrew word, Selah, and pause for a moment and take time to think and reflect and give thanks. Amen. If you wish, do join in the words of the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And I leave you with a blessing as you begin your summer holidays. It sounds a little bit like the psalm that I just read. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and reveal his kindness to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Have a wonderful summer. Look after each other and keep safe and well.